Uh, hi, good evening. Welcome to our podcast, Simulated Reality by Analytics India magazine. And today we have with us uh, Vishal Rai, the founder, CEO, managing director of Embold Technologies. Uh, Vishal has over 20 years of experience in software and technology across the globe. Uh, and before starting Embold, he used to work in California Infosys, uh, leading a software development team for networking platforms and embedded systems. There is one thing Vishal loves more than his bike, that is clean code. Tell me if I'm wrong. No? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Vishal. Hi. Hi, Siddhupi. Hi. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having me on your uh, podcast. Yeah, great. It's great to uh, uh, have a conversation with you. So, uh, Vishal, uh, before uh, we actually delve into the big questions, I just want to understand uh, what's the idea, what's the premise or the idea behind uh, starting Embold, and what was the need that forced you to do this? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, one of the things that I started noticing uh, while I was working with you know great organizations, great customers, and I was with Infosys, is as teams started growing, when I joined Infosys, it was a very small organization. Uh, when I quit, it had you know 200,000 plus very good developers. Uh, and there was an interesting trend that I saw that as teams started becoming bigger in software, the issues in the software quality started increasing as well, which is which is funny. Um, and and that is what you know it was very frustrating when you were on programs. Uh, which weren't achieving their stated goals because of, of poor quality. And that's why, uh, you know, in all naivety, I thought tools were built to help teams write great, great code, but, um, but they didn't achieve. And I like good products myself. I'm a very, very, I'm a power user. You know, I like, we all like our iPhones because it's just a great user experience. So we all like to use Google search. Because, of course, besides the quality, it's just such a clean user experience. It just works. Um, and that's why, um, you know, with that opportunity that I saw of, of helping companies write product as great as Google does or Apple does, uh, I, 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 I took on this mission with my co-founder, uh, Sue, who I know almost for 20 years now. So it's not just my idea. It's, it's him equally as well, uh, where we decided this was a great time to to reinvent uh, software analytics, and um, and that's why we did. You know what? Let's just we didn't find a better tool, uh, or we didn't find a tool that we would have loved to use ourselves. So we said, let's just make one, and that was the genesis of our company. Okay, uh, so you said uh, you met Sudarshan. So you met Sudarshan in uh, Infosys, right? Yes, yes, we know each other for over twenty years now. We were colleagues okay. in Infosys. Okay, and then you decided to build this technology and uh, start uh, start up altogether. So, yes. how has the journey has been so far? Like, how is the journey so far? Yes. Um, exciting, as yes. exciting as any blockbuster Hollywood movie, right? <laughs> it, it it has everything. It has end of the seat thrill. It has. Frustrations, joys, drama. Um, yeah, it's just been very, very eventful and exciting. And uh, I think we're just not, we're not even at the first 20% of, into the movie, right? It's still, still very exciting. And we, are, we still wake up very, very, you know, the new idea, there's so many different opportunities and possibilities of enhancing our own product for our customers. Um, that is just, you know, it's fantastic. Great. So it's been like two years, right? 2018. Uh, if no, I'm not wrong. we actually started the company 10 years back, but we spent seven years developing the tech. It's like a hardcore, uh, you know, we spent seven years researching the technology on our own money. The product has been in the market for two years. So after, you know, this old fashioned way of, of developing it, uh, researching it, uh, we were finally, you know, happy with the first version that we wanted to launch. And uh, yeah, the product in the market for about two years. Right. Okay. So uh, initially, you mentioned that uh, as the company grow, we have more issues in the software. So uh, if you can shed some light on what are the day-to-day -day problems that usually developers face? Yeah, I think the the, the biggest, or we have been developers ourselves, right? 
And I think developers today work really hard. Really, I mean, the pressure they have in building the product faster, you know, uh, at the best quality that they can. And, and software is, is very slimy. You know, you, you think you've got the feature, but something wriggles out. And the problem is the impact of, of one line of code uh, can, can affect the entire company, right? Imagine if Google search engine had one line of code that was faulty. That's what it takes. It takes one line of code, you know, one developer who had a bad day coming to office in Bangalore for some reason, he didn't sleep well or she didn't sleep well, can really take down an organization. And that's, uh, and that's what I think today developers, I believe, uh, need, need support in being more productive uh, because they are already overstressed. And as some people say, I'm the creator as well. <laughs> um, so uh, I think they need help in, in, in being more productive and having a better work-life balance so they can finish their work with the best quality and go back home and, and enjoy life. So that's what that's what I think developers today are. They're, a lot of them are under pressure. They are, they are working with software systems that are growing in complexity with the hour. And today, you don't build a software system for yourself, right? Today, you can build a an app, but then it's connected to 50 different services, which are connected to 100 different environments. And one weak link can 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 create issues in your course. So that's what that's what um, I think is the key challenge that developers today face. And therefore, any little we can do through our technology to help them uh, or be more efficient in their work um, would be you know would make our day. Correct. So it's more like a uh, it's like uh, making the work for developers easy. Correct. So helping them, uh, you know, find the bugs in the. So tell me how the process works. Correct. So it's it's pretty much like if I want to take an example, like an auto auto suggest or an auto correct a code. Correct. Right. Oh, so yeah. you so you're writing software and you're making mistakes. Today the, the way the process works is everything is post facto. So, so tools that are being used today for helping developers identify quality work. If you look at the, at the legacy, they were built in the water. They were built for the waterfall model, where you had one release that took six months. You had enough time to test. The tools could be slow, but because you had time to do it. But today, everything is agile. Everything is fast. So, your so whatever tools that developers need to use have to work fast. Has to give them feedback fast. Has to be easy to implement. And and that's that's what that's what happens. So with our platform, it fits into their their workflow. It helps them find problems. And then, you know, we are not the first software analytics tool, the code quality tool in the market. There have been great tools for ages, but there were four. There were, and we as developers had four challenges with them. You know, we had tons, but I would identify four key challenges. Very simple challenges. One was the ability to use them. Right. I mean, you could have a you could have the best car, but if it takes you an effort as as strenuous as a marathon to start the car, then it defeats the purpose of the car. So tools in the in the pre and bold world, you know, great tools, but the setup usability uh, was very challenging. And, and there are reasons. These tools were built by great engineers, but for great engineers. You know, and, and to, but today, you know, a lot every every engineer is not necessarily as experienced as the other. So you need to make it easy for them to use tools. So that's the ease of use is very very important. Secondly, the way we analyze software approaches, we do similar stuff, but we do it different. Uh, so that's that's what makes that makes involves output more useful and actionable. Third is, you know, we are built for the future. A lot of tools were built for the past. As I say, it's, it's the waterfall world was the agile world. We are built for the future. Our technologies that we have ingrained in our core in our core platform, you know, has things like neural networks, very fast, state of the art in memory databases, analyzers. Uh, and people say, why have we done that? Because you know, we are not building something uh, for today. We are building something for for today and the future. And we are using technologies of today and the future. So our platform is. It's future proof. So that's so it's future proof. It's easy to use. It's fast. It's really fast. And um, and it's fun. I think it's just 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 fun to play with. And that, those are the four key elements that that we think we are bringing to uh, to our users. Right. 
like you said like you know all the developers are not uh, doesn't have to be like all they don't have to be you know very good at work they in fact the whole developer community has a lot of new age people coming up right taking this as a career and like we we do write stories about how the recent graduates can go into this you know uh, complex field so a tool like that probably can help you know uh, or for such developers who are, who exactly. are trying to the career right and I, and I think that there's a very popular example that Steve Jobs used to take, right? Um, he said, if you, if you, you know, if you take human beings and our, you know, the energy we consume through the distance we can travel, you know, we, we get beaten by animals by miles. Uh, but then, but then you create a bicycle, right? And, and the bicycle, the energy you invest versus the versus the output you get, you know, leapfrogs the energy consumed. Uh, the distance travel by animals. So okay. it's it's a computer is like the bicycle of the mind. Sure. And, and, no, and that's what we always want to do. So and, and it's a joke, right? So so Sue, who is our co-founder and CTO, he is, I think in my eyes, the best developer, top five percent best developers on the planet. He's really good. So the joke between him and me is Sue, I want you, I want us to build a machine that can make me write software better than you. So that's our hidden agenda. So uh, uh, someone who's not as, as you know, so, so that's the, that's that is that is how tools should be built. It should be giving, it should be enabling the the people who are not as skilled to to break to close the gap between the best developers on the planet. Because every organization today, if you look at any company in the world, look at any companies in India, uh, the great developers, you know, who are really good, are paid really well. You know, the difference between, you know, uh, it's the example of a taxi driver in Mumbai, right? Uh, and a developer. So if you, if you, if you take the difference between this is a text, the best taxi driver in Mumbai versus the average taxi driver, the best taxi driver would take you from point A to B, maybe 30% faster. I'm taking speed as, as, as time to get you to destination, as the efficiency, not how much they charge you, but time to get you to their destination. So the difference in the, in the cabbies in, in Mumbai between the best and the average probably be 30 percent right the best guy but in the software development world the difference between the best and the average could be as high as 100 times yeah because that's why companies pay so much money to great developers and do not pay them for on experience but on how good they are oh. that's the difference so you see an average cabbie in mumbai versus great and average developers we hope that within board we can make average developers as slow, perhaps, if not as great as the best. So we bridge that gap, and and it has an advantage because every company today is a software company. Every government is a software government. And if you have to to fulfill your you know your your organization goals of you know how does a company change or how does a company work, you've got to write you got to digitize your business. That means you've got to write you've got to transform the functionality of your company into a digital organization. Which means you've got to write a lot of a lot more software. Plus, you got to write it faster. You can't be taking ten years to do anything. You got otherwise your competition is going to eat you alive. So every company has to build software faster, and you just can't produce the number of developers in the quantity. You know, you don't. We do not have enough developers, great developers. So the, if, I mean, except maybe in Apple or Google, who are really exceptional organizations, or Microsoft. But for the rest of the community, they have to make do with with all the, all of the developers that are available. So our our mission is to make all these companies using our tool get the best out of developers who are not as good as the ones in Google or Microsoft. And that's the challenge and the opportunity for us. It's basically filling that gap, you know, it's making a level playing field for the amateurs as well as the ones who are already experienced, right? Yeah, well, Google has done that for search, right? I don't know if you remember, uh, before Google, uh, you, yeah. it was a funny thing, when, whenever I used to see the Olympic Games, you know, I used to remember, uh, I, it, was a, it was a fun competition I had with my sister. You see how many countries you would remember, right, based on the flag. Today, you know, everyone just Googles it, right? Oh, yellow flag, or take a picture and search for it. So Google has already, uh, you know, taken over a lot of our remembering, right? Our short-term memories become uh, really, really good, but long-term memories become really, really weak because of Google. Uh, but it's not a bad thing. Some people say it's a bad thing. I say, no, it's just, you know, it's a good thing. That's what... 
yeah and and so we can so that's what we want to do we want to we want to have our platform help developers write great code without the worry of making mistakes correct correct so uh, coming back to the uh, questions a bit uh, what are the ramifications of bad quality software code you mentioned and uh, that can be used in the enter, enter, enterprise space uh, also you mentioned your tool is a future proof if you could shed some light what is future proof yeah to answer your first question i'll give you a simple example um, and i say that very often i think software is going to be in our bodies in five years yeah. and you do Something not want like it to crash and you do not want it to crash as often as your smartphone does that's the importance of of poor quality uh, in software uh, software is no longer a choice a good quality is no longer a choice uh, if your software you know it's the weakest link i can create the biggest impact it's never the biggest score and that's why uh, it, it's companies and good quality should be on the agenda of the ceos of companies because their business runs on software now right yes and if that software crashes the business crashes the, the shareholder value crashes so that's why i think quality has to be on the agenda of the boardrooms is no longer the agenda of one quality or cio i think the the second thing is we strongly believed that the power of neural networks or what the world calls ai uh, we bet on that 10 years back. The world hadn't even heard of it in mass, on mass. Because the concept of neural networks as a technology is really, really interesting. You know, it's like a human brain. Uh, it's not useful in the beginning. It just takes and learns. But there comes an inflection point when it just becomes, you know, way more intelligent than humans anymore. And the whole, I mean, our application of neural networks is learning from the past to prevent mistakes and, uh, and and a lot of mistakes that are made today in the software development world uh, are bugs as we call them that have been made in the past and someone has fixed it and there's no way of harnessing that past failure for future success so that's the first application of the network but uh, at, from a future proof we think the core tenets of our platform you know the core building goals of a platform uh, enable us to apply these very powerful techniques in the future, which will have a tremendous impact on, on software products, which typically will run organizations, which typically will manage the planet. So, so it, it, it is a con it, it's a, the consequence of, of poorly written software will be felt by all of us. Uh, and that's why you know, more needs to be done in that rather than less. Right. Software is like the brain right now, of like like you when you said, yeah, brain of the company, which needs needs to be you know nourished well and yeah. yeah. It's like a human body, right? If you do not take care of yourself, you do not eat well, you do not invest in yourself, um, and you just, you just let the bad habits adding up, uh, it will come back and bite you one day when you least expect it. Right, and that's. The same with software. Right. So, what sort of these errors that can be possibly arise in a code? Like, if you can give me. Like, it could be anything, right? It could be. Uh, it could be. Uh, I think the, the issue that we're trying to solve is not necessarily errors arising. We can't stop errors from arising, right? You can't stop diseases from happening. They might happen based on your constitution, based on your, your environment. What we're trying to do is 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 early diagnosis, and if possible, uh, suggest, suggestions of preventive techniques or uh, curative techniques. Uh, so right now, it's preventive based on our own algorithms, but uh, the future will also be curative techniques. Great. So, uh, so what is that value proposition that Embolt is, uh, you know, providing to help developers make the whole process of coding easier? Right. I, I, that's a great question, and I always get that uh, with my customers. And I take that with an example. So, um, so Sajuti, you're sitting in a room, right? And and I say, can you tell me the quality of the room that you're sitting in? And I don't know uh, if you're a civil engineer or not. 
So if you weren't a civil engineer, if you're a civil engineer, you would know. But even if you weren't, the natural thing you would do as a human being is you would say, okay, let me look around the room. And I see the design of the room, I see the walls, I see the beams, I see the corner, I see my fans here or my ACs here. Uh, and then you may sense a crack in a corner or you may sense a bit of uh, leakage of water, you know, or you could sense that maybe the this particular corner is not straight, you know, very naturally, the natural, you know, entry point into judging the quality of the room you're sitting in would be just looking at the design. And then you would say, okay, I sense that corner looks a little iffy. And then you would go there and see, let me see what the strength of that wall is, let's see what the humidity is. And with these multiple factors, you would triage where the problem was. And once you figured out what the problem was, you would fix it. The, in our definition, uh, the beauty of any code analysis tool is not to give you a solution, it's to diagnose it correctly. It's the same with any doctor, right? The best doctor is not someone who can fix you well. The best doctor is someone who can diagnose you correctly. Because once you are diagnosed correctly, it can be fixed very easily. Any doctor can fix you. So that example that I took, the room design, uh, is in board. It's a multi-dimensional analyzer which looks at multiple facets of the code, not just one dimension. And, and taking the example, if you use it, if you if you were to analyze the quality of your room using tools before import, they would say, Sajuti, the humidity of the room is 55, the average humidity of the room should be 45, so you have a problem. They are not wrong. They are not wrong. But does that really help you solve the problem? You can not use it. Sorry? They are not pinpointing the problem. Yeah, the diagnosis is so vague, right? They just give you a data, which is right. They're not wrong, but you fix the humidity, but it, it doesn't solve the problem of the room. So as a developer, you're given a whole bunch of data, which is probably correct, a whole bunch of data, but you're like scratching your head and saying, yeah, if I fix it, and then I come to this, what I said, Imbold is an agile tool versus traditional tools, which are more waterfall. This approach would be right in the waterfall world, where you had enough time, right? You have one year for a release, and you could have enough time to see the humidity and the impact. So it's not wrong. But in today's fast moving time, you have to be able to diagnose it, identify it, prioritize it. And once you do that well, you can fix it. So Imbold is the first multi dimensional, uh, perhaps, tool in the world uh, that does analysis from multiple dimensions all at once, and not one after the other. So we are about four times faster than any tool in the market, comparatively in spite of the fact that we generate seven times more data. Okay. So that it's our whole approach is not to find issues. And you can see that with some of some, some similar tools, they, they're very proud of saying, you know, we diagnose 7,000 issues. You could, but how is that you actually making my life miserable because suddenly I have 7,000. Can you identify maybe 20 of them, which give me at least 80% of my problems? And that is, the actual relevance of a good tool, and that's what Imbold does. It doesn't swarm you with data. It's all the data. So if you want to dig further, you can get that. But our whole approach is to help our users identify those twenty percent of the issues, which are creating eighty percent of the problems, and fixing them, thereby getting speed, efficiency, and quality. So, so that's that's what makes Imbold so useful. Uh, uh, besides the speed and everything, so that's, I don't know if that answered your question. Yeah. So basically, if there are hundred issues in, and so basically, Imbold will pick the critical ones. Which are required to be resolved right now, like and it know. ranks them for you. It ranks them for you. It, it it tells you almost directs you to how to fix it as well. It handholds you to to you know whether you fix fix the design issues. Yeah, sorry. It it gives a curate, curative measure for for the uh, bug that that well, you know yeah yeah correct. So, uh, so there are a lot of competitors right now in the market, like you mentioned, right? So, yeah. So, how, where do you think this future of this uh, static code analysis, you know, heading to, and where is Embold is currently uh, positioned in this whole landscape? So, I think, I think static code analysis is. I think the word static, any, any, the future is going to be code analysis. And static is going to be one element of it. Because there are today, if you look at code analysis tools, there are so many tools, but 
what what they do is you know what i call they're all ankle biters right they will bite a little bit here a little bit there and uh, and companies you know do they have to spend you know, they have to buy cover the whole code analysis they're going to buy 10 different tools right because they're all doing a little bit here a little bit there uh, and i think that is not efficient for a company and embolden vision is to be um, you know to reduce the number of tools that a company needs to buy by adding more functionality which are uh, which can be added to a code analysis tool and and to do that our whole approach of code analysis is not static alone we look at code analysis as a big data problem and today you have so many data sources that are surrounding software not just the code uh, your code is there your jira is there your, your logs are there your test data is there and we are, we are, are and that's why the neural network is very, very interesting. So we are, we are, uh, we are, we are, we think, ask for any company uh, that has to bring a very powerful developer experience in code analysis has to bring and harness all that data and, 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 and derive the intelligence and give the developer that one or two prescriptive ideas which will help her or him fix the problem. So a lot of, you know, while the developer experience has to be simplified, you know, mm -hmm. but the, the back end has to be very, very uh, well engineered uh, using a big data approach so that, they, so that you can not only help developers find problems in real time, but also help them fix it. Pretty much, as I say, we are very inspired by, um, by Google search or by the recommendation engine that you get in, in Amazon, for example, you know, they, or, or Netflix, they give you based on the movies you see. And I think it's just, it, it is, we, we want to be, you know, our whole approach is pretty much like that. We, we almost, you know, we, we, we are inspired by this movie of Tom Cruise called Minority Report, if you've seen that. Yes, of uh, course. So, it's a, we, yeah, so I think our platform is, is eventually, uh, you know, that is the direction of prediction, of predicting bugs and mistakes before they happen based on based on how the developers write in code, based on the historical data, based on the environment, uh, and mm -hmm. almost telling, hey, Vishal, you're about to create an issue which can create these five security bugs, which can bring down your app store, which can bring down the banking system, because, and therefore, you know, change this. And that is the future, and you can do that with software, because all the data is pretty much available. Great. So how is the market right now uh, in India, or, you know, uh, globally? Mm -hmm. if Great. I think I think India is uh, we we have the largest uh, user community for our for our uh, free product on the cloud in India. So there's a lot of interest. Uh, there are lots of uh, but I think the world software development with the with the amount of great tools that are being developed not just by us, by Microsoft, by uh, different companies. Uh, we are all together working to bring down the complexity of writing software applications. That's the whole idea. If you can make it easy for someone to write software, because easy for my mother to write her, her reminder app, um, you know, my mother is not a computer science at all. You know, if she can, you know, and I think uh, if you can bring down the barrier uh, to write applications that can help us in our personal life, help companies, uh, I think then we. Uh, we will see. You will see that software can change lives, and, and I think that's what we are all of us involved. Microsoft, Amazon. We're trying to. We're building the infrastructure so that you know, people can build more applications, reduce the barrier, and I think India is 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 uh, is just a start. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure uh, there is a massive. We have we have great talent in India, right? The largest population of young developers, uh, very ambitious, very very uh, frugal. Uh, you know, they always know how to get the most from the least. Um, and I think great, great ideas are going to come from there. And, you know, what, what we hear is, is happening by companies like Reliance, the Geo, the investments they're making, uh, Paytm has done a great, great, you know, they've, they've, they've shown that you can be a first generation, generation software billionaire. Uh, you know, so I think, I think that they are, they're shining examples of, of what success can mean in India. Uh, and I think that's going to happen for sure. Yeah, yeah. For new developers, I think Embold is going to make the life very easy for them. You know, to you know, prepare good codes. Yeah, like we want to help them reach their dreams, right? We want to help the next 
Mark Zuckerberg of India to build their Facebook. Uh, you want to play a small part in their success, and that's what we are here for. This is the message to all your developers there. Go out, you know, create your dreams and use it more. We have a free version. Just go use it and, and, and just become great developers and write great products for the world. Right. So India is currently uh, witnessing many developers right now, right? Do you, you think uh, the, the this era has more, um, you know, de developing developers and programmers as a career? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think it, it, it is it is irrespective of your domain. That's the beauty. You could be uh, um, um, an advertising expert. You could be using software to build your, you know, help you in your day-to-day -day job. You could be you could be a DJ, you know, spinning music, and you would still use, you know, they use great software. You could be an artist. You could be a finance person. You could be um, an engineer. You, you know, you could be a mechanical engineer. You could be like, you know, you, today you can use software to build your own little mechanical devices. So I think it's it is as we make as we lower the bar of building applications, I think it will it'll it'll pervade to all all phases of life. And the nice thing about it is you don't have to have money anymore, right? You could be this little kid who's good in maths in this little town in India which has 16 hours of electricity, uh, but who has a laptop or who has a phone. And if you're curious and you're, and you're hungry, you can you have the same tools. That someone in Palo Alto has, right? Because all these tools are available on the internet, free. You know, so I think I think that internet has leveled the opportunity, the knowledge, the learnings for anyone in a small town, in a little village, with some basic knowledge uh, to dream and build applications uh, and aspire for the world. So I think software is one of the greatest, uh, and internet, you know, greatest uh, democracy movements that we have seen, and, and we have just started that. I'm just. I'm just excited to see what the future holds for every country, not just India, Africa, America. Uh, and, and, it's, and it's gone to smaller towns now. So you no longer have to be in California to build the greatest company. You can be anywhere. Right. Yeah. Also, I think in this uh, whole COVID lockdown, I think a lot of these new age people have started developing and started coding, yeah. programming. I think the numbers are increasing. Because uh, we keep doing this job analysis, and we have like so many jobs for developers and stuff. So yeah, yeah a lot of them coming up in, into the industry, right? Yeah, and, and that's why, like, just as how uh, how an artist's tools are their paintbrush or their colors or their pencils, we think we highly recommend all these young, budding, interested uh, individuals who want to be developers. To incorporate and bold as said daily tool. And right. to learn, even you know, not wait to go to join a company and learn about quality because we have a free version. We have a we have a, just use it as a part of your daily life in programming, just as how you use an email. You have a free right. version, just go sign up and use it from day zero. And that's my only advice to them. If you show to your future potential employers. That software quality is not a hindsight. It's not a. It's not a post factor. It's something that you've learned programming with from the inception. I can guarantee you, you are assured thirty percent more salary than your work. I can guarantee. Yeah. You. Yeah. It is such a pleasure to interview candidates who talk not about I can write a Java code, I can write a Kotlin code, but I know how to write good code, or I know what the bad practices are, and I've seen this in my own project. And here I will show you. I wrote a simple application and I showed you the mistakes I made and I showed you I used tools like Bold and I showed you how I can make it better. We would immediately hire her of him, immediately, because that's what every employer wants. And, and, and this is my message to you, to anyone who wants to, you know, incorporate in Bold as a part of your day-to-day -day work. It's very easy to use. Right to us will tell you how to do it. It's free. It's on the internet. And, and, and carry it with you like your resume. And, I can, and you will get a job. It's quality over quantity any day. Yeah. yeah. There's okay. enough quantity of developers, but it's sorry, go ahead, Susan. No, 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 please, please, please. Yeah, you said it right. There is enough people who want to become programmers, but your way to outshine your peers is, is add the quality layer to your resume and show how it's about your life and you're sorted. Great. Especially when the competition is too much right now. Yeah. So, yeah. 
Okay, uh, coming to the a little technology aspect of it. Uh, if you can tell me how can applying deep learning is going to transform this whole uh, soft, software development arena? Yes, I'll, I I like to give examples. Sure. Uh, so it's like it's like when you were in school, right? I mean, when you were in school and you have to you have to submit an assignment. An assignment that is uh, solving a problem, right? Say solving a problem. Uh, if it's a simple binary problem, then it's fine. It's yes or no. But if you have to give a more curated response, a person, you know, there are two, the you know, persons who, I mean, I'm just talking generally, right? I'm not taking an outlier case. My my prediction is the person whose assignment is going to be better than the others. It come from two qualities in that person, uh, two fundamental qualities. One is, or three. One is the person is just naturally intelligent. So I'll remove, remove that because that is something you're born with. So, but if we take everyone to be the same, it is someone who has read more on that topic versus his or her peers, mm -hmm. and or someone who has had more experience in that topic. Mm -hmm. Very first, right? right? Right. And that is deep learning for you. Using the technology, you can gather experiences from different data sources, which is knowledge, and you can get and you can harvest that knowledge to apply to future problems. Okay. And that ability of deep learning at a very fundamental level uh, makes and doing that at scale at speed that is unseen before makes the technology useful. And again, I'm very, I'm, I'm really hyper simplifying it, but that's the promise of the technology. So today, uh, you you can either do it brute force by training everything, and, and, and this is what things were done statistically, or you can use modern algorithms which underpin deep learning to accelerate that process, to to, to bring that that uh, you know the, the, these two aspects of experience and knowledge. To solving problems of today, and that's why uh, we think software is a perfect candidate because in any software application, uh, you have a lot of data because of history. You know, you that's one of the techniques that every version has been categorized, documented, all the mistakes logged, all the logs you know, harvested, stored somewhere in mathematical model, which is what machines understand, uh, versus. Uh, and that's what it makes. That's what makes application of, of neural networks in software analysis such a promising science, a promising you know technique. Uh, and, and that's why I know uh, the, you know a lot of great companies are applying uh, AI or neural networks to speech and image, which are tougher problems, right? Speech and image are tougher problems, and and, and software is much is much more simple because it comes from the basic concept of the languages that machines understand. That's why I'm very bullish on application of neural networks to code analysis, software analysis, and the future. Correct. Correct. Of course. Anyways, uh, I think the application for whole deep learning is massively increasing. So, you know, using it for software development is the right way to move forward. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, so, it's you mentioned uh, seven years you've been developing the product and then two years it's been two years now that you have uh, launched so uh, what were the initial roadblocks or the lessons that you have learned or faced while uh, building up this company and now becoming a success so i think one of the biggest learnings for us was in software uh, perfection is the enemy of good okay you know, uh, you should never do that. In hindsight, if you did that again, we would just launch the first version of the product. We should have launched the product at least four or five years back. We were late by three years. Full disclosure. Uh, and we would have learned. I think if building another software product, you should just launch it in. Unless as someone, as Reed Hoffman said, right? Unless you're not embarrassed by your first version, you've not built a great product. So. I think launch fast. We should have launched earlier. Uh, we should have uh, probably launched 
first in a market which was more receptive to giving feedback on such innovation. I think uh, maybe launched it uh, or tried or, or tried it out in markets like USA earlier than later. Yeah. Um, because you know they really appreciate and understand not only from a from a product, but even their companies really um, really try out new stuff to give you ideas. There's a lot of experience is there, right? It's not. I mean, it's, Europe is there, but you know, Microsoft and Google and all these great companies and tools have come from Silicon Valley. So there's more experience to learn from faster. Um, it took us more time to learn in this market. Uh, yeah, I think these two would be the key learnings: to ship fast. Uh, don't waste to have the perfect product. Uh, get feedback, let it crash, let it burn, learn, and uh, and maybe try out uh, in, a, in a slightly different market. Uh, so, so pick the right market for your product. And those are the two lessons that, that we've learned. So, right. Perfection actually a lot of times delays the whole process. Like it just doesn't let you go and you know start it. You know, yeah. Yeah, that, that happens with a lot of entrepreneurs, I guess. And that's a lot of things takes a lot of time. Uh, so what are the challenges that that is currently is there in the industry? Is there any challenges that you're currently facing with the company or with the industry as a whole? So yeah, I think one, I won't say it's a challenge, but it's an interesting observation, right? Um, developers as a community are very forward thinking, right? They always want to try the latest and the greatest, and they're always ahead of you know, the power users. Uh, that is good, but sometimes when you when you when you go and talk to large companies, right, and, you, and they you know you talk to them and say you know what, you know, software quality is important, and and you should try you know try out new tools and and, and help your organization move faster. We often run into the classical you know it's in the, in the it world it's or software world, it's called the classical ibm problem uh, right. a lot of companies hire safer companies to go with uh, so that they can't be no one was blamed in the past to hire ibm right uh, because it's such a great company so i think that is still a challenge we face when you go with a new product um, you know people are very apprehensive they don't want to change uh, because understandably, because software quality is not on their KPIs. Yeah. Uh, so I understand that, but I think if that changes, uh, that will that will make life much easier for us. So it's a challenge. However, um, even in large organizations, you have certain really innovative teams, innovative people, open open minded uh, engineers, managers. Uh, they are our biggest champions. You know, all the all the evangelists for change. Interestingly, are endorsing our product full heartedly. Uh, the second industry where we are we are seeing great opportunity is the automotive, the self driving industry. Uh, you know, that's undergoing massive transformation, and the future car is going to be computer on wheels. And uh, so, some of the largest companies in the world, uh, and funnily, for some reason, our platform works really well for C, C++ code. You know, mm -hmm. uh, also for Java, of course, it's a given. Uh, so we're getting very, very uh, so some of the top companies in the world in the automotive supplier space, uh, the OEMs are embracing our platform. So very interesting dynamics. And, and it, it's kind of reflects that the automotive industry is really changing fast, right? The car is becoming a computer on wheels, and these companies have to have to evolve at the pace of Tesla. Right. So that's a good thing for us because if you want to evolve at the pace of Tesla, you have to innovate at the pace of Tesla. If you have to innovate at the pace of Tesla or Waymo, you can't do that with people alone, so you've got to buy tools, and and thankfully they find our tool as being one of the better enablers uh, for them to build software as fast and as good as Waymo or Tesla, and that's that's a good market for us too. Right. So, what is the current user base? You said that it works good with C++, of course with Java. What is the current user base of uh, Mvolt? Who are the people which they are using it? So we have companies around the world. We have customers in Japan, North America. We have customers across domains from banks, insurance companies, people building self-driving cars, uh, to people, uh, media shops in New Zealand, to companies building IoT in, in, in Oregon, to some of the largest pharmaceutical companies using us as a part of the DevOps pipeline. So it's very secular. It's very widespread. Um, and it's basically, you know, we don't look at domains anymore. Anyone who's building 
uh, software applications for their business, as long as they, they, they fall in the purview of our programming languages we support, our customers. So we support about 15 to 16 programming languages and if we keep adding more languages, deeper checks, uh, more integrations, better usability. So yeah, we innovate really fast. We have a we have a 20 day release cycle. So we we you get a new new version of Imbold every 20 days. Uh, you know, so people are excited about a release, they look forward to it, and we've just got started. Correct. So what is the market in India? Is it as as widespread as outside? Like there are uh, you have customers in India as well, the customer base. Yeah, yeah so we have uh, we have uh, insurance companies, new age companies in India. Um, we have thousands and thousands of developers using our product, a free product in India, and it's going every day. So yeah, it's it's a, it's, a, it's a very very interesting market. We want to get into the government because you know there's a lot of digitization happening. Uh, looking at opportunities, looking at partners uh, who want to resell, integrate OEM products. So, yeah, so we are in a few. You know, uh, on a trial product, resell it, uh, talk to us. We're looking at as many partners as we can in India. Right. So, any uh, interesting use case, like, you know, uh, in India or outside that you can share, like any example or a story? Uh, I have a very interesting use case. Um, I, I will not be able to share the geography or, or, or yeah. but it's, um, it's, it's one of the largest energy companies in the world, headquartered in Houston. And they were uh, they were migrating an application from the headquarters uh, to another location outside America, uh, in Asia. And the, the chief architect was very nervous because this this application uh, they earn close to twelve billion dollars on the software applications. So it's really very important to their core business. It's in the oil and energy space, and and, this, and the chief architect you know, they had to do it because the application was stable and they wanted to send it to another center. And he said, uh, he said, you know, Vishal, I'm very nervous. So why don't you plug in and bold? Uh, because we have to do it. It's an instruction from our board. Uh, and I'm nervous. I want to watch their quality through bold and control the quality through it. And bold has a very interesting thing called the bold score. So you you can score the quality of your application from minus five to plus five. You can score the application of your component that you work. So in a nice, funny, interesting way. So when 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 they migrated it to this other center of theirs in Asia for about 300 developers, right? So the developers obviously want to have no developer likes to be monitored or and they said, you know, your bonus, your annual bonus would be on your on the inbound score of the application and your and the inbound score of your work. So for the first two, three months, they literally, the developers literally bullied our engineers saying, tell me what is the minimum change I can do in the software? To get the biggest increase in the score, so I can get my bonus. And we said, just improve the quality. There is no shortcut. And they, it was really a lot of pressure. Come on, come on. They used to harass us on our chats because they were on different location. And we were like, improve the quality. Just follow what Involved is saying and fix it, and you will get it. So after three months, you know, they couldn't hack the system for some reason. They couldn't, you know, figure out a shortcut. So the only way they could improve the score was by improving the quality. But what happened is, circa three years later. These three other engineers became such good programmers, such good programmers, and they weren't from Ivy League universities. They were they were from ordinary engineering schools from small towns, but they became such great programmers because they listened to Imbol's feedback, not the manager, not books. That today they are being hired at unbelievable salaries. So obviously the the, uh, the company got sad because Vishal, we trained them, and now they are being hired by Google and Apple. At four times more salary, but that was a nice story. That if you follow what Imbol did, you actually improved yourself. You didn't need university, you didn't need to train yourself. So you got more money, and we set them up for a successful career. So that's a very, very heartening story, almost like an HR story, but actually we are a software quality tool. So we, we like that story a lot. Yeah, it's like a skill enhancement tool. Yeah, has become. Yeah, yeah. yeah so you know, of course, you disagree with it, and you fight it, you try to hack it, and then finally you realize you give up and you follow it. But voila, you follow it and you actually, your brain just rewires and they are, when they look at code now, they, they, can, they look at it from design, quality, and they know what problems are. And they just became great engineers and we are very, very proud of that. Of course. So uh, we're almost nearing the end, but uh, 
uh, so how are the clients finding value in partnering with Mbolt? If you can, you know, uh, shed some light on that. I think the biggest benefit they are seeing is, uh, a lot of them say this is the first quality platform that is showing us tremendous benefit. We can measure it. So it almost justifies that investment. So I think that is that is very heartening to hear. Uh, we, we also are contrary uh, because they have such high expectations from us. Uh, they really uh, push us to keep adding a lot of the features we have in our roadmap. They're so excited about it. They want us to pull it back and say, you know what, we're still a small team compared to, you know, the Microsoft here. Uh, so which is also an endorsement of our vision. Uh, but yeah, I think, I think that's the thing. They can actually measure for the first time, they can measure the ROI and benefit of a tool, a quality tool that they couldn't in the past. So I think that's that, that's a ringing endorsement of the value they're bringing to them. Right. So uh, you, you mentioned a small team. So what is your team size right now? We are 50 people. Oh, okay. Yeah, small enough. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So what is the roadmap uh, look like for uh, Mbold? What is, what is the future? Uh, so I think uh, on the base level, we keep adding new checks. We keep adding new programming languages. We keep enhancing our existing languages. So that's, when, that's like bread and butter. But yeah. as I said, we are whole approach to code analysis is moving ahead and beyond of static code analysis, getting it's, it's almost applying big data for code analytics because you've got so many more data sources uh, that are there, well, you know, well curated data like logs, like test data, like dynamic data. So we are bringing all that to the core objective of, of developer first, bringing and bringing all that experience to the developer in his or her IDE and helping them become faster, better, and write cleaner code. So that's that remains our, our North Star. Right. Right. So yeah, uh, it was. It was actually. If you should add anything uh, before we uh, wrap up this uh, amazing conversation that we've been having. No, I think I think I want to thank you for the opportunity. I think it's it's really heartening uh, to see so many interesting outlets coming in in India and there's so much of interest in in technology, which it should because it's still you know India. I think is you know we are natural you know. We you know, historically we've been natural mathematicians, right? Aryabhatta and all those, and, and it's it's already there, and, and, and those are the grounding principles of computer science and computer programming. Um, yeah. So I think we should, you know, we should embrace these tools as a part of our lifestyle. I think tools are great accelerators, and and, and think uh, how we can make you know better applications and applications for the market. And I can say there is there is this gazillion opportunities. Of building successful companies and earning money, right? Today, entrepreneurship has become as lucrative a career as working for a large tech company. There's so much funding, there's so much support from the government, there's so much, so many institutions. Uh, today, you can successfully set up a unicorn in India. I don't have to move. You know, uh, a lot of great institutions like Y Combinator are coming to India now because of that. Given COVID situation, you know, and everything being on the cloud, you can be sitting in your, you know, uh, in your in your own farmhouse in, 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 in northern Bengal or, or in the heartlands of UP or, or in the interiors of Tamil Nadu and, and building your next billion dollar startup because everything is, is available to you as long as you have a stable internet connection and electricity. And yeah. I think um, both are getting better than India. So I, I would say, you know, become an entrepreneur, start early, make mistakes, fall. And if not, if you're good, you can easily get hired. So, you know, that's the nice thing about programmers. You know, if you're good, you can get hired so much of of opportunities, but I would say I would encourage entrepreneurship in India. Right. I I'm not really sure about it, like a ten years back, but now I think this whole uh, developers as a career or being programmer is pretty much budding. And you know, with tools like these, I mean, I think it's going to make the process very easy for them. Yeah. You know, to build exactly. Right. Yeah, both yeah. time and cost, right? You can, these tools are free and you can, you know, save you time. So you can roll, roll out your your app or your, your company within eight weeks. And as I said, ship fast, let it be embarrassingly bad. As long as you have yeah. basic functionality working and you get user feedback, that's a yeah. start. Start somewhere and iterate, iterate, iterate and become better. We have immense resources nowadays. Like the internet has just made it, like you said, like, you know, you just need like electricity and just a uh, internet connection and 
you can be anything you can be an entrepreneur just by like you know sitting in a small room yeah yeah so that's why i think it's we live in the most exciting time in human history and i mean exactly. we have covid and everything which we will get over it you know it's, it's unfortunate but i think we will develop eventually develop immunity to it it'll become less like how we have the flu season we'll have the covid season and we will get through it um so do not get disheartened i think i think we live in really really exciting times yeah yeah so yeah it was great talking to you vishal it was uh, it was very insightful we have learned a lot about uh, the technology and how the industry is moving right now um, how developers it would be a, you know very beneficial for them to you know understand such tools you know and take this forward as they in their career and stuff yeah it was great speaking to you vishal thanks for part like yeah thanks thank for the you. opportunity and, and stay safe and, and have a day for great day you do you do you do thank you thank you